Hello, YouTubers, and welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I have something totally different than what I typically do. Uh, for those of you that follow multiple restoration channels, you'll know about the Three Blind Mice and the Invitational for April, which is a 72 Ford Ranchero by Hot Wheels. So I ordered this casting. Uh, it was not exactly the same one that Polly showed in his video uh, on the preview, the, the introduction to the Invitational, but it is a 72 Ford Ranchero by Hot Wheels. Uh, this was the only one that was a, a later issuance that I was able to find in stock anywhere. So this is the casting that is being utilized for the Invitational build. Um, so there's a whole list of builders, and uh, I think it's featured on most of the other sites. Uh, I'll get the list and I'll put it down in the description of this video. So you can check out all the different channels that are uh, doing this build for the, the Range Hero. So you can see from the, uh, the stock casting here, it's not a bad little casting. It's, it's kind of a kind of a cool little car, uh, sort of the, the mullet of the muscle cars, right? All the power and business up front and uh, party in the rear. So I thought this would be a really fun casting to do something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while, um, and that is a mashup build. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with a mashup, that's where you take two different castings and you kind of put them together. Um, there's a, a couple different builders uh, that do these and do them very, very well. Um, I've been absolutely floored uh, by some of the mashup builds that I've seen from a couple of the, the uh, matchbox builders. Um, and these guys are taking vintage, you know, 1950s, 1960s uh, matchbox castings and putting them together into something that looks like it could have come from Lesney, but never really existed in the first place. And since this is an invitational, I thought it would be a good chance to sort of flex my skills and show some of what I can do outside of just the regular restoration video. So to begin with, uh, we're going to do what I do on any other casting, and that is we're going to drill and tap these uh, rivet posts so that we can eventually put this casting back together. But this is going to take a rather radical departure. And I think when you see the other casting that I'm going to use for the mashup, you will start to understand why. So with our rivets drilled and tapped, I'm going to use a screwdriver just to pry against the base and pop this loose. Again, this is pretty straightforward like I would do with any other casting. Um, the, the difference is with the mashup, I, I'm not necessarily going to keep all of the parts from this model. So it, it's not uh, really necessary for me to make sure that everything stays intact. Um, I'm, I'm using this really as just a sort of a kit of parts. And some of these pieces I may use and some of them uh, I may replace with something different. And so uh, I'm really looking at each one of these. Um, what can I use from this casting? And what, what are pieces that I might want to pitch and replace with bits and pieces and parts from the other uh, donor model? So the interior and the glass on this are fit to this casting. Chances are pretty good. I'm going to reuse those. Uh, the main casting, obviously, I do want to keep. Um, and it's going to take uh, quite a bit of, of work uh, to do the body mashup on this. So step one, uh, as always, is to get rid of all the factory paint. So it's going to go for a dip in my citrus strip tank here. And we'll let that sit and get all the original paint off. For the donor model, I, uh, I spent a lot of time just kind of walking up and down the aisles and looking for what's the craziest thing that I think I could uh, mash up with a 72 Ford Ranchero. And I came across this casting, which is a, a Star Wars speeder. Uh, this is the Han Solo speeder. And it's incredibly detailed. It's got a, a lot of really 
trick little features through this. You can see sort of the exposed engine on the top. There's body panels on the sides that are, are missing and ripped open that show you part of the uh, workings of the speeder underneath. Um, also, kind of uh, characteristic of this model, you'll see, is because it flies, uh, it has no wheels. It's got the uh, jet engines there in the back to kind of push the speeder along, and uh, it just floats. And so I thought this would be a really, really cool casting uh, to do a mashup. And so uh, like just like my base casting, uh, step one of this is to disassemble the model and again, start looking at what, what's my kit of parts? What can I use from this model or what might I want to carry over into the mashup build? Uh, I think the base of this is really cool. Uh, it comes with a little stand to uh, float the model on. The interior of this is wicked cool. Uh, the, the one thing that kind of sets this apart is it actually has the little Han Solo driver in there. And Hot Wheels is not big on having figures in their cars, so that's kind of an unusual thing, a little bit more rare. Um, but some, some cool bits and pieces. Uh, this little plastic wing on the back here, it's so specific to this casting, I don't know that I'll use it or even any part of it. But uh, you can see now the rest of this casting, all these little details, that's all uh, poured into the metal. So this is all metal bits and pieces um, which is really where the fun in a mashup starts to, to happen. Um, I'm looking at this casting for what are the parts that I can use off of this uh, and incorporate into a mashup build, and this thing is just a honey hole. So we've had uh, the castings soaking now in the uh, citrus strip for a while, and I don't usually show this step, uh, but I thought... You know, with this build um, and this being a little bit longer video, maybe it would be cool to uh, take a little bit of the time to show some of the cleanup on this. Um, after it's had a good chance to soak, I usually uh, do a once over here with my brass bristle brush and just some water down in my uh, shop sink and we'll get all these cleaned up. I, I did notice, uh, as opposed to the typical restorations and the, the hard enameled paints that I uh typically come across on some of my older vintage models. The paint on these came off really, really easy. Um, I soaked them for maybe 20, 30 minutes in the citrus strip, and you could see the surface all bubbling up. So this was a really easy, straightforward strip. So I want to turn my attention to the base now of the original Ranchero casting. Um, you can see the, the wheels are held in with these uh, little formed posts kind of on the bottom. And I'm just using an X-Acto blade to kind of run along the edge and uh, chop off one of those posts. That lets me remove the wheels on this casting. And in the words of Doc Brown, where this is going, we don't need wheels. So now I'm going to turn my attention to the speeder casting. And I know that I'm going to end up cutting this thing up to get all the different parts and pieces off of it that I can utilize in the mashup build. Uh, to do that, I'm just using a small metal cutting wheel on my Dremel tool. And I'm kind of working my way around the casting. Now, I know for sure I want to do something with these rear engines. If we're going to turn a 72 Ranchero into uh, something that could have come out of the Star Wars universe, um, I want it to be literally the coolest ranchero in the universe. And to do that, we're going to need one hell of a power plant. So I for sure want to harvest these, uh, these engines off the back of the speeder model. Um, thinking about the back end of the ranchero uh, and uh, kind of all the real estate that's in that bed in the back, um, I'm thinking that the top of this casting would make a really cool kind of tonneau cover that might fit right there into the back. So I'm going to cut down the sides and see if I can get uh, this piece out um, and see if we can use that on the back end of the casting. Something else to keep in mind when you're doing this is this actually gets the castings very, very hot. 
Um, and so as I kind of work my way across here, uh, the reason I'm holding it with my fingers is I can feel the temperature coming across that. If it gets too hot, it can bend or warp. So I want to cut a little bit. And as it starts to get too hot for me to hold, I want to stop and let the casting cool down and then come back and we'll cut a little bit more. So after uh, several minutes with my Dremel working away on this casting, I've kind of got it down to sort of a kit of parts. Uh, so I've got the two fuselage sections that show kind of all the wires and everything exposed. I've got the piece that I want to use for the uh, tonneau cover in the back end of the Ranchero and a, a couple of these other bits and pieces that I may use, I may not use. Uh, I kind of fully intend on whatever pieces and parts are left over from this. I uh, may utilize in a second mashup build. So I think this is going to end up being kind of a two-part uh, video, one for the, the three blind mice build off, and then one that I may want to do just for myself, uh, just because I, I really enjoy this whole concept of doing a mashup. So with our Ranchero soaking for a while in the stripper, you can see uh, that new paint, it just, it comes off so easy with the citrus strip. Uh, again, this has only been in for maybe 20 or 30 minutes, and you can already see all that paint just bubbling up and ready to come off. So we're going to get this casting all cleaned up and ready to mash up. So here we are. Uh, I've got a few of these pieces to, to kind of start fitting. Um, I'm not sure, but I think that this is going to work. Um, it's definitely big enough. I, I need to trim it down a little bit to get it to fit uh, nicely into the casting, but I think that's going to work for the tonneau. Because this uh, model is going to hover, uh, obviously I don't need the wheels anymore, and I haven't really decided if I want to leave that wheel arch and just maybe show some of these fuselage panels kind of back behind where this really looks like a ranchero that's just been converted. Um, and, and I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to use the these pieces. This might work for a, a front grill. Um, or if that's maybe taken and, and pushing it a little bit too far. You know, when this is all said and done, I still want it to look like a Ford Ranchero. Um, yes, a Ford Ranchero from another galaxy in a different part of the universe. But um, I think, you know, I don't want to go too far in a departure different direction. So uh, I, I need to kind of decide here at this point what parts of the original model I want to try to keep to keep it looking like a Ranchero and what parts I might be able to substitute. You know, thinking about the wheels and uh, flying cars from cinema and everything else, it's impossible to, to kind of ignore the uh, Back to the Future reference. Um, and, you know, maybe that's a solution. I, I could take these wheels and turn them sideways, have them look like turbines, maybe angle them forward a little bit like it's... Uh, blowing the car forward but uh, that's that's a real option I could you know just use the wheels and tires that I harvested off the base casting and turn them sideways and and make it look like it's in hover mode um, or you know I can fill those wheel arches and and sculpt it and uh, really make it look more like a speeder so again this is kind of the fun part of the mashup builds is deciding which pieces you want to use, using pieces in ways that they were never intended or, you know, trying to figure out how I'm going to put this whole thing back together to get uh, one really kick-ass car by the time we're all said and done. So I'm kind of working through just a few ideas here, seeing what I might want to do and how I might be able to put these pieces together. So after about four to five hours of cutting, filing, fit, and finishing, I finally got a couple of parts and pieces uh, figured out on this. To get the tonneau to fit right and, and really to be pretty tight, what I did was I took a little uh, blue painter's tape and just ran it across the back end of the casting. Um, what I wanted to do was, was make a pattern or make a, a, a mold sort of of what the back end of this thing was. So I trimmed it up with my X-Acto and that gave me a pretty close uh, idea to what the back end of the Ranchero 
was. And then I was able to transfer that tape over to my donor piece from the speeder and use that as sort of a template to then grind and sand and file down to get this piece to fit really nice and tight into the back end of the Ranchero. And you can see uh, just with a little patience and, and time and massaging that around, this piece fits so tight and it just sits right on top of the, uh, the little wheel well humps there um, that this is going to end up looking damn near like it was a part of the original casting to begin with. Now on the engines, I ended up cutting each of the engines free of the, the overall casting piece and then doing some adjustments and fit and finish both on the body of the Ranchero as well as on the engines themselves. And what I really wanted to preserve is the body line at the back of the Ranchero, sort of that big sweeping fender that comes down. It's, it's a very noticeable, sort of a, a trademark part of the Ranchero and uh, really gives a lot uh, of identification really to what this is. And so um, in a mashup, it's still important that you see you know, the bits and pieces of each of those uh, original castings that they still hold some integrity. And so I wanted to align these engines with that sort of sweeping body line coming down on the rear fenders and preserve that bit of the Ranchero casting. Now, there's a really nice body line that runs right through the, the back end of the door and then right through the front part of the fender in the Ranchero. I don't want that body line to go away, uh, but I think I may end up uh, sanding and sculpting the, the back end a little bit to turn that sweeping body line into more of a, a cowl induction on those engines in the rear. I made some executive decisions on the front of the casting and uh, trimmed up some pieces. Um, I want these to look a little bit like this was a conversion. Uh, like somebody took a really sweet 72 Ranchero and turned it into a speeder. So I want enough of the casting to be changed and modified to really show, you know, that, that this thing now belongs uh, on another planet. But I, I didn't want to lose all the looks and stylings and all the cool pieces of the Ranchero itself. So uh, this is really, truly a, a mashup. I'm just kind of fitting different pieces. You can see this is actually one of the uh, rear vent pieces off the original engine and we're flipping it around upside down and tucking it in uh, where the, the headlights uh, sat on this casting. Um, on the other side, I've kind of squared up that wheel well a little bit, uh, made it look like the original speeder where maybe that was an access panel that's fallen off um, and you're seeing through and you're seeing parts of that fuselage and all the wirings and workings that are showing up underneath it. Um, so, you know, this is this is where doing a mashup, it's really so much fun because there's no rules, there's no limits. You just kind of tweak it and mess with it and play with it until you get something that you're happy with and, and you like. And this has been hours and hours, but oh my gosh, this has been a lot of fun working on this and, and trying to take uh, pieces of these two models that were never, ever intended. I'm sure there's some car designer at Hot Wheels right now whose skin is crawling, the hair on the back of their neck standing up, and they're going, oh my God, what are you doing? And and that's the best part of these mashup builds. Um, it's just, it's a blast to to be creative and use the this sort of kit of parts and put together a, a totally different model that never existed. So now that it's time to start uh, putting some of these things together, I've kind of identified the parts of the model that I want to, to keep and the parts that needed to be cut away have all been cut away. And I know that the back area here where the, the rear wheel wells are of this casting, um, I know that I want to sculpt all that down and sort of uh, shape it into sort of an induction for these jet engines that are going to be mounted in the back. And that means that I need to fill in these wheel well areas. So to start doing that, I'm using a little bit of uh, just styrene sheet and some super glue. And I'm going to glue these on the inside of the casting. That way I can pile up my fill material on the outside of the casting and uh, give me something that I can, can sculpt and shape 
um, without, you know, compromising uh, this being able to be put back together. Uh, because eventually I want that base piece to be able to drop right back into this casting. So I put a few dabs of my uh, InstaJet glue on there, and then I'm going to hit it with a uh, an accelerant that uh, dries the glue just almost instantly on contact. So with both of my filler backer panels glued into place and trimmed up, uh, I can now start filling on the body. And to do that, I'm going to use a little bit of JB Weld. I've used this before in a couple of my other videos. Uh, it's just a two-part epoxy. Uh, you mix equal parts, 50-50, the black and the white. And I'm fortunate that uh, Hot Wheels even included a nice little mixer board for me here. Um, to mix up the paddles, I also like to use uh, some of my old nail files, the ones that don't have any grit left on them still. I'll trim those up, sort of a, an angled piece on the end, and that gives me a really nice kind of little mini putty knife that I can mix and stir the JB Weld and apply it to the model with. Now, while I've got the epoxy on there and it's all nice and wet, I want to go ahead and try to stick at least the first one of these uh, rear engines in place as well. Now, I know that I'm probably going to have to go over this at least one more time with some additional filler, filling in some of the gaps between uh, the different casting pieces. But this gives me a, a pretty good idea of how that's going to fit up and where I need additional filler it's always easy to mix up a little bit more JB Weld and add it back into an area where I'm lacking. You can see the back side of this engine uh, was a little bit hollow and I, I know I'm gonna need some more epoxy down in the bottom side there. So I can sort of fit and finish these at, at a later date, but I wanna get them gooped on and adhered. Now, I am impatient, so I use the quick setting JB Weld. One of the things that I really like about the quick set stuff is it sets up to almost a sort of a putty consistency within about 10 or 15 minutes. And this is where it's it really, it's set, it's on the model, it, it's good and stuck and adhered, but it hasn't reached its full hardness yet. And that means that I can come in and cut it and sculpt it and sand it really, really easy at this point. So I kind of monitor the castings. I want to wait until it gets to sort of that gummy consistency where it's hard, but it's not completely hardened. And then I can come in with my X-Acto knife and trim off some of the excess. And that just saves me some time down the road. I don't have to sand and dremel and, and file quite so much. Um, if I can get, you know, the bulk majority of it sort of sculpted out at this stage. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just going through and cutting off the areas where I know I have excess uh, JB Weld on there and getting that a little bit closer. We'll, we'll call it like a 50% um, to being able to, to finish it. Now I'm still going to come back and sand this with my sanding sticks and some fine grit sandpaper before it's ready for paint and primer. But uh, at this point, uh, my main concern is getting any of the big glops, the gummy areas, the, the parts of the adhesive that are in spots where I know I don't want any adhesive. So we'll cut and trim all that excess off and then we'll worry about fine tuning it later.
So through the magic of TV time lapse, I've uh, kind of fast forwarded here and I've gotten all of my donor pieces uh, adhered to the either the base or the original 72 Ranchero casting. And so this has given me a pretty good idea of what my mashup is going to look like. So you can see the, the rear engines fit right on top of the line where the original bumper was from the base of the Ranchero. Uh, we filled in both of the wheel wells on each side and sort of sculpted that kind of cowl induction um, down along the sides to feed into the engines. Now on the top, I had uh, a couple of pieces left over from uh, another casting and you'll see that in the part two video. Um, and I just thought that they were perfect for the top end of this casting. I also had to, to fill the wheel well holes on the base model as well. And so you can see I've used the grill from the rear uh, engines. I've used part of the dash from the speeder um, and opened up and exposed that almost where like a, a rear or lower body panel is missing. And you can see uh, that piece coming in. I haven't yet stuck down the tonneau piece. Uh, that's the last piece that I wanted to put in and I wanted to do that on camera. I also think that I may at some point in the future uh, possibly want to remove that or, or make that an articulated piece or I don't know. So to put that in uh, rather than gooping a whole bunch of JB Weld that makes it absolutely permanent and uh, creates a, a mess all the way around the sides, um, I'm fitting that in just with a little bit of my InstaJet and we'll go ahead and hit it with the accelerator and get that locked into place. Um, it also gives me a, a little bit less working time on it, uh, but because this fit dry fits so well, uh, I'm not too terrible worried about that. So wanted to at least do this piece on camera, gluing that in um, and getting that all set and ready for paint. So for the paint on this casting, I knew that I wanted to do a lot of uh, weathering and sort of faux finishes on the end. Um, nothing in the Star Wars universe is bright and shiny. Uh, all the ships have, you know, wear and age and um, dirt and stuff all over them. And, you know, if this is supposed to be a speeder in that universe, it, it's going to get some dirt on it. And so the the end color of this is only going to serve really as a, a base um, and so when I thought about, you know, what direction do I want to go? What color do I want to take this model to? Uh, for some reason, I just kind of kept coming back to that Star Wars lightsaber green. And as far as I know, nobody makes an, an official lightsaber green color. So I'm starting with a little uh, Tester's gloss yellow. And I'm adding to that quite a bit of this uh, fluorescent green. Um, I know that's going to end up darkening it up a little bit. Uh, it won't be the, the bright, shiny green, but I don't want this to be fluorescent. Again, this color is just serving as the base color for all of our future weathering and finishing. So we're only going to see bits and pieces of the base color poking through in the final finish. Um, so I'm just kind of playing with this, going a little bit at a time. Uh, we'll add a little bit of reducer and mix it up take a look at it and adjust it as needed. So I finally got the paint, I, I think about where I want it. I did end up adding a little bit of the gloss dark blue, uh, just to try to overcome a little bit of the, the base yellow that I started with and kick it more into that green color. But I'm happy with where this is at, so we're gonna get it loaded up in our airbrush and get it going. One little tip on the airbrush, uh, when I store, when it, in between painting, when I store my airbrush, I like to put a little bit of the airbrush cleaner down inside the cup. And that keeps everything from uh, drying out, gumming up, uh, don't end up with dried paint stuck all over my needle. Um, and then I just have to remember before I start painting that I want to clean out uh, the, the cleaner that's sitting in the bottom, blow it all out. That way, every time I start to paint, 
I'm starting with a nice clean airbrush. So that's a little tip you can use uh, when you store your airbrush when it's not in use. Put a, few, a couple drops of the airbrush cleaner down in there while it's sitting and then blow it out first thing before you start. So with our paint loaded up in the, the gun here, we're going to do a, a first uh, light tack coat, base coat of this casting. And, you know, I'm really not sure what to expect. Uh, I don't know how the paint's going to cover. I don't know if you're going to see a difference between the casting and the JB Weld filled areas. Uh, I don't know that that's even a bad thing. You know, I think seeing some of that fill through the paint might help with our weathering techniques as, as we move on to finishing this model. But uh, we're going to do a, a base coat here, like tack coat, and we'll slowly build it up. I'll probably do two or three coats on this casting before we move into some of the finishing techniques. So I like to give about 20 minutes or so dry time between each of the coats. And this is after the first two coats, we're getting ready to apply the third and final coat on this casting. And I can really see, you know, the parts of the model that are starting to cover. And I've got a really good thick coat, especially there on the sides. I was a little concerned with the filler that we were really going to see that. And it's actually covered really, really well with the paint. But this third uh, coat, I like to do a little bit thicker, uh, want sort of that glossy finish, even though we're going to strip all the glossy off when we're all done with this. On the base piece, um, I know I want to keep this sort of in that shiny chrome kind of world, uh, but with the modifications that I've done, removing some of the printing on the base and then filling in all the panels, I want at least enough consistency there that this all looks like one piece. So I've loaded up a little bit of my tester's aluminum paint, and we're just going to give a, a quick once over on the base here just to kind of even everything out. The thing that I like about uh, painting over the chromed bases is I can come back with a, a little Q-tip with some thinner on the end, and I can still remove some of that uh, silver aluminum paint that I put over the top, and it'll bring back the chrome that's underneath it um, just with a, a simple wipe on the top. So I may remove parts of this overcoat to expose some of that chrome on the bottom, uh, any of those pieces that I want to stay shiny. Uh, but for sure, all my filler panels and everything else, I want to get coated with a little bit of the aluminum and knock down the shine on, on this. Again, nothing in the Star Wars universe is bright and shiny and chrome. Um, it's all weathered and worn and beaten up through uh, space dust and travel. So uh, we're going to dull this out and give it a good, a good base coat. The other thing that the base coat serves as is a nice uh, background or a base color, uh, again, for doing our weathering techniques over the top. Uh, I want to use some oil washes and things with this that'll really highlight and showcase some of the fine details, especially, you know, all the pipes and the fuselage sections on the side and uh, the little details on the grill. Um, the, the oil wash will seep down into the lower areas of the casting and uh, wipe off of the top and, and it'll really uh, showcase all those little lines and features. Uh, and I don't want to lose that. It's very easy to do if you get the paint too thick. So you'll see that this is a very, very light coat on this. And that's the only coat that I'm going to do. This won't be a two or three layer buildup. I want to do just enough of a light coat to kind of even everything out on this base and uh, serve as a base coat for our weathering techniques. As always, when I'm done with my paint coats, it goes into the toaster oven to bake at 200 for about 20 minutes. They're base casting done and dried and baked out. Uh, you can see I hit a couple of the areas, both the, 
the rear engines, uh, the fuselage section that's uh, uh, molded and, and glued into the top casting, and then a little bit of the exposed engine area on that back tonneau. Now, I wasn't terribly concerned about uh, masking any of this. Again, we're going to do some finishing techniques over the top that are really going to hide a lot of these things, but uh, I did want to take a little bit of my base green and just my fine detail brush here and paint out some of those areas uh, that are going to be weathered, but I, I want to make sure that that silver is only on those sort of engine casting pieces back there. So I'm going to do a little touch up with the brush and then we're going to start weathering. So with the top casting touched up, and I'm going to set that aside to dry a little bit before I bake it, uh, I can turn my attention to the base. Now to paint the base out, I'm using a little of the gloss black, and I've got this thinned down with quite a bit of thinner. Um, I want it just to kind of be more of a wash rather than a, a paint. And I'm actually going to remove most of this once I put it on. I only want the, the black to kind of sit down in the, the recesses and the crevices and just show off some of the details that are in the casting lines there. So you can see we've done uh, the top of this little fuselage a little bit. And that, that sort of light black wash, it just uh, it kind of... Um, gives a, a more metallic look instead of just the base aluminum paint. And I'm going to do the same here on the bumper and the grills in the front. So we're working it down into those recessed areas and then removing all of the black from all the high spots with just a, a clean Q-tip.
So the last step that I want to do on the base is uh, through layering to, to add another layer of the shiny aluminum paint and just hit some of the highlights, some of the top areas, the areas that might rub, um, the places that I want to bring a little bit of a shine back to. So we're going to be a little more conservative on this rather than doing the wash over the whole thing. Uh, but we're going to hit a couple of these highlighted uh, detail areas that we really want to show off some of the the more protruding areas of the casting. Now this is really where the fun begins. So I've got uh, a very, very thin wash of black. And this is maybe, I'd say, one part black, gloss black to uh, maybe 10 parts uh, thinner. And you can see it, it goes on very, very thinned out. Um, and I know that you can buy specific mixes uh, made just for this. I believe it's called a panel line paint because when you're doing uh, scale models, you, you want to showcase all the the door jams and the body lines, each you know where one panel joins up with another. And you hit it with this panel line paint and it just sort of instantly soaks into all the recessed areas. Um, rather than going and buying the, the specific panel liner stuff, you can make your own. And no more than I use it, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, just a really super thinned out uh, black paint. Um, in addition to hitting the, the lines, the panel lines on the casting, I also want to hit kind of some of those recessed areas, specifically the intake areas on the engine sides, and then anywhere where I think dirt might accumulate on this thing. So we're going to go through um, and just highlight some of those areas. Again, I keep this really light on the first pass, on the first wash. I am going to continue uh, to layer one of the, the tips uh, I picked up, and I think this is from Bare Metal Hot Wheels, uh, was the you don't have to do your entire faux finish just in one bit, one take. And sometimes actually layering on uh, the paint gives you a much better end result. So we're starting here with just a, a light layer. We'll let that dry. I'll see what that looks like. And then any areas where I want to come back and dirty it up a little bit more, I can. I, I do know that, you know, I want the back end of this thing to be pretty crusty. Uh, again, kind of thinking about creating a, a space for this in the Star Wars universe and in that storyline. Um, you know, it's a Ranchero. It's a cool car, but... I want this to be a, a sort of off the track kind of model. You know, it, it came in, rode hard, put away wet. And uh, I want to show some of the, the dirt and grime maybe from its journeys along, especially along the sides here and, and areas where I think, you know, it would have sucked in more dirt, uh, especially on those intake areas and kind of down the sides of the car. So we're going to take uh, a couple different layers to get the end result that we're looking for with this. Um, you'll also see as I move my brush, I'm following sort of the body lines of the car and the direction that it might be traveling. Um, the worst sin that you can can make when you're doing a faux finish is to uh, have any brush lines or strokes that are going um, up and down because cars don't move up and down. They move forward. So you can see all my brush strokes, I'm trying to kind of follow the, the lines and the direction of the car so that if any of those show through, it looks like, you know, streaks that are flying down the side while this thing is, is moving along. So with all of our weathering complete, uh, you could see sort of the, the lines and the streaks on this car. Really happy with how this came out. Now, it is a little bit shiny, but my secret to that is I'm going to bury this whole thing under a flat clear coat, and that will dull it out and uh, make it a little bit uh, more weathered and, and worn looking. 
Now on the base, I, I know that you know this car flies and I've got to have a way to display it. And I don't want to just set it on the base and risk damaging all the paintwork and everything else that we've done on the base. So uh, much like the donor casting, I want this to be held off on a, a stud so that it looks like it's floating when I display it. In order to do that, I drilled a, a little hole in the base here and I'm using actually a, a, a waste uh, grinding tool from my Dremel. I just cut the grinding head off and I kept the, the shaft part because I thought that's just about the right size and scale and it's got a nice shiny chrome finish on it. So uh, we'll put it in the base here and super glue it, hit it with a little of our instant set and we'll be good to go. While I was painting this model, I did put in a couple of the M2 screws in the posts, and that was just to keep the paint and the clear coat and everything else from gumming up those holes. Uh, I don't want the color match screws. I want something that's gonna look like the base uh, when I put this back together. So I'm gonna take out uh, my sort of placeholder screws that were there while we're painting and, and get ready for reassembly. On the windscreen, you can see I did have to make a little modification to the corner of the glass, and that's where I added this fuselage panel on the inside. I had to clip the corner so that the, the glass would clear that. On the base, on the interior, we painted that up as well, um, hit it with the flat clear, and I had to make a couple adjustments to the bottom of the uh, interior piece so that it would mesh up well with the base uh, once it gets all snapped back together. And you can really see the, the flat clear coat on this has preserved all of those weathering techniques, all the faux finish we did underneath it. Uh, it's going to protect it, help it last, uh, but it's also kind of dulled down the model and brought it more true into the look of a weathered speeder rather than a shiny muscle car. Um, to reassemble the model, uh, I'm using just the same M2 screws just without the paint on them. And I don't, I could go over these and weather them as well, but I think for now I'm gonna leave them as is. Um, and so I'm putting those back in with uh, my little hex driver here. Uh, it's a great tool, works really, really well for this. I don't have to fiddle with uh, um, Allen keys and things that are, are the right size. I just ordered an, an M2 uh, hex screwdriver that works with it. So this base uh, should just screw on exactly like the original car did. Um, all the modifications we've made, everything else have been to kind of preserve that fit and finish. And this actually has gone back together relatively well. I'm really, really happy with how it has come out so far. So I hope this has been uh, kind of fun for you to watch. Uh, I know it's probably totally different than what the other channels are doing, but I just couldn't pass up the chance to do a mashup. So as a reminder, here is the base casting that we started with. A pretty cool little 72 Ford Ranchero by Hot Wheels. Some really nice decals, some big fat tires on the back. This is a cool, cool car. And in doing the mashup, I knew I didn't want to lose the cool factor that this original casting had. I just wanted to kind of give it a new storyline and a new universe to live in and see, you know, what would I do if I was a mechanic in the Star Wars universe trying to convert this already cool car into one hell of a speeder. And this is what we came up with. So uh, I hope that this has been fun for you all to watch. It was really a blast for me to do. Um, as I said, I, I started doing this one and ended up with some other pieces and some other donor cars. And so I've actually done two of these and I may eventually get around to editing the videos and putting together the other model. But uh, I've got a pair of these now and uh, this, was, this was just a really fun, fun project to do. So I wanna give a shout out to uh, the Three Blind Mice uh, for their challenge to do this casting. Um, and thanks for putting on the Invitational, inviting all the uh, different customizers and channels to participate. I uh, hope this blew your socks off with uh, what could be done with this sort of a casting. And uh, be sure you check out in the links all the other builders and see the other channels, see what else other people came up with for uh, this invitational build. Um, we all 
appreciate the support and, and the views. Uh, it's why we do what we do. So uh, make sure you check out the other builders and see uh, their builds as well. As always, if you like this, give me a like down below. If you want to keep up with this and all my future builds, click that subscribe button, and we'll see you next week on another Vintage Diecast Restoration.